Greetings everyone, CCX here, and welcome back to the Legends of the, the Wind Waker. In the last part, we ended up getting hit by P-Hats, and in this part, we ended up getting, uh, we ended up getting farther into the Forbidden Woods. I accidentally called this area the friggin', um, Forest Haven in the last part. That was really dumb. But in this, actually called the Forbidden Woods. Stupid me! Anyways, I make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. But, now we're actually gonna go ahead and... Since we now have the boomerang, and since I can only manage to use it only on the R button, because trying to use it any way else is going to be impossible, because I can't... Let's just say that it's kind of one of the things that I don't like that they introduced now, because I thought it was a good concept, but it kind of is very detrimental when it comes to trying to play this game with a controller. Mind you, you're not supposed to play this game with a controller, you're supposed to play it with the Wii U pad. But... Yeah. What if people... And this this is actually coming more from the fact that what if people, you know, don't want to play with the Wii U pad and they want to play it with the... Um... With the... With the Virtual Console controller. I mean, come on. You guys, you, they have to... They have to be able to know how to go ahead and cater to both audience, to be honest. They can't just cater to one. This is the area that tripped me up before, because I didn't know how to actually cut down all these things at once. I thought that the boomerang was defected, but no. But basically, whenever you target first, it's where it's going to go. It goes in the order of where you target. So, yeah, if it also hits the wall, it's also going to come back to you. This is actually by far the... Worst carnation of the boomerang, I have to say, because it's kind of very, it's very limited in sort in terms of utility. Like it does the stun, and that's really about it. Like it's it. I have to say, the best boomerang carnation that I've seen, and this is coming from all the Zelda games. I have to say, is the magic boomerang. The Magic Boomerang is by far my is by far my favorite boomerang in the Zelda series. And if you want to know where the Magic Boomerang comes from, it comes from Oracle of Seasons. Best boomerang in the game. Cause my god, that because the thing about that boomerang, you have the capabilities of controlling it once you throw it. And that is it is really good how well they utilize that in the dungeon that you obtain again. I mean, you obtain it in. And also there's another thing I've noticed about Zelda games now, and, um, well, the 3D Zelda games. Like, this is probably just my opinion alone, but I noticed that we don't really, we use the items, but we never really use them, like, throughout the entire dungeon. Like, in the top-down Zelda games, whenever you gotten yourself a new item, you basically used it. To go ahead and um, manage to get through the dungeon. And I mean, I get that, you know, sometimes they don't do that and sometimes they do do that. Maybe I don't notice it. Maybe I'm kind of like complaining too much about it. But to me, it's kind of like once you've gotten like the boomerang, the. Once you've gotten like all. Per I'm just gonna throw that in the water right now. Ah, I like that effect. I like that effect with the bombs. Okay, you need to go because you're going to be annoying in my ass. Take that. All right. Don't take that. Screw you. you stupid sack of crap. <laughs> Did we get it? Okay, good. All right, let's get through. This room is completely optional because there's only one thing in here. But remember, I'm going for... Semi 100% here because yeah, I, I I am pro. I am pro strat. Oh, that sucks. I hit him and he didn't even die. Yeah, I killed you. I'm gonna kill your brother. Got him. Suck it, loser. Anyways, what you what we need to do is we need to go ahead and um try to figure out how to actually get into that area. But there's also an eyeball in there that we can't really kill normally because. You know, it, we can't, we just can't kill these eyeballs normally for some reason. They're just, they're just too badass. I mean, we can't kill them with the boomerang if they're looking at us, mind you. But if they are looking at us, our weapons are useless. I wonder if I could just, no, I can't. Okay, I got it. 
thank you for coming out so I can just whack you in the face. Now this one will be turning into a Deku Baba seed flower thing. That's basically what this thing is a reference to. It's more so as a reference to the Deku, the Deku flower in uh, Majora's Mask, which is the first introduction of those things is actually where they come from. Deku flowers do appear in the Oracle games. Like, they appear in the um, season, the in one of the seasons, and they're kind of not, like, utilized, like, at, like, a lot in the Oracle, in Oracle seasons. They're more so just used as platforms. They're just used to be able to get through platforms. Now, here's the wonderful text. And now. Yeah. Sea chart. Gotta love it. Sadly, we can't get out because we have no choice but to go through here. It's a good thing Link is very, very small. Alright, now we can leave. Some people don't go into this area if they're, like, playing the game normally because there's no point. There's really nothing in here besides a treasure chart. <sighs> Sadly, though, we have to go ahead and recut the vines because I guess something reattached them. I don't know. There's a lot of fool's treasure in here. And it reminds me of another dungeon in the Oracle games. Yeah, I'm going to be making a lot, a lot of references to Oracle Seasons because I just finished it. And now I'm doing the Link, the Link um, game from uh, for ages, which is technically my favorite one because that's the one I'm um, I'm more familiar with. But anyways, yeah, there was like there's a dungeon. I forgot the dungeon's name, but it was like a dungeon where most of the time the treasures were completely pointless because there was either nothing but a random, a random. Um, damn, I'm trying to get my words. Uh, random normal rubies, and green rubies for that matter. Anyways, there's our boss key, but sadly we can't get it because lol, we just can't get it. Now in this area, what you want to do is target in this order, because if you target it any other order, it's not going to work. You'll be doing this again in a later dungeon, but for now, eh. You just end up targeting them in a circle-like order, and you'll be fine. Sadly, we can't really get through that that door over there because it's locked, so there's no point. So let's go ahead and just grab the key. But of course, Ganon's minions are not going to make us just take this boss key. You know what? I always wonder, who the hell keeps these keys inside these chests? Who the hell puts them in here? And why do they end up conveniently giving... Okay, well, zip. Alright, now I want to show that emotion that I end up... Yeah. See? That's the emotion that they end up giving when you end up stealing their skull necklace. Skull necklaces are also rare rarity as well. You need these. Yeah, see? Ow. I just got decked in the face. The boomerang is very useful for the, mo for the moblins because they get stunned very easily. Also, you know, be careful because... Yeah, they're very, very aggressive. They're, like, more aggressive than, um... Link, you're not... You weren't even hitting them, man. Ow. Okay, Link is in a pickle. I love that. I love that, that... I love that run. Whoa! That was close. Goodbye, fool. Huh. <sighs> The Moblins are probably the most difficult enemies to really fight in a Zelda game because they hit so hard. And with the hearts that we have now, which is by far the most basic heart count that you can ever have in a Zelda game at this point, which they end up completely changing for Skyward Sword by giving you like five hearts right off the bat, which don't mean anything because it still feels like when the enemies beat the hell out of you, it still feels like you have like freaking, um three because seriously the enemies yeah by far the enemies are yes difficult to beat but you know they could be they could have been a little bit better all right now what we need to do is jump back onto this and fly up so we end up just stopping here because we need to 
we needed the boomerang to actually cut these two eyes balls in the face so we could actually get through. Because after this, we're actually up to the boss, right? Uh, ironically enough, we're actually up to the boss. We have one more, we have two more of those bug enemies to kill, and then that's it. Okay. Um, what the hell? <laughs> What happened? <laughs> all I know is I got hit by one of them, and then all of a sudden, they just both... I, I hit one, and then his friend hit me, and then I guess because the sword slash cut him, hit him so... Okay, whatever. I can't, I can't even, like, explain what the hell happened there. Okay, now we're in the final area. You will... You can find, um, some wonderful fairies. Not these guys. These are not fairies. These guys are definitely not fairies. That definitely, definitely, definitely not fairies. These are fairies. Fairy! Yeah! Now, the fairies actually work a little bit different. You know how, like, in... Well, I actually didn't. I can't really say you remember because I never died in Orcarina of Time. But in, um... Orcarina of Time, if you died, there was a death animation... A death cutscene, I should say. And then, you know, the fairy come out and heals you. They don't do that in um, Wind Waker. You kind of just go ahead and, um, you know, get revived right off the bat. I love just putting the, um, I, <laughs> the best thing I can say about my editing right now is just literally just pulling the, um, enemy's names. Say hello to Kayla, Do Kayla, Kayla Domos, I think is her name. It's a female, because we all associate all females with flowers. But anyways, Kayla Demos, or Domos, here, you have to end up cutting down her vines. Once you cut down her vines, you can end up just literally just cutting the hell out of her. Holy shit! <laughs> oh! Kicked your ass in the first try! Oh yeah! That's what I'm talking about! <laughs> um, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Holy damn! Link, you swordsman, dude, you killed that thing a lot one try. You have my thanks. <laughs> uh, okay, um, uh, <laughs> anyways, we saved Picard, and that is the end of Kale Dobos. Or Kale Dobos, whatever the hell her name is. Um, she has other attacks that I didn't even bother to go ahead and showcase. The occasionally those tentacles will sometimes come from the ground. Um, when if you miss the chance, if you miss the chance the first time, she'll eat you. She'll do like two hearts of damage, I think, or a whole heart of damage. And um, when she goes back up. The tentacles, the tendrils that you saw, they'll kind of go ahead and barrel onto the ground and try to slap you repeatedly. And you have to go ahead and lather, rinse, repeat to go ahead and cut it down again and then slice it up. Or you could just do what I did and just completely beat the hell out of it in one cycle. Yes, it is very rare that people can actually beat Kayla Domos in one cycle. But I guess, you know, I was feeling, I was feeling lucky today. And... Yeah. But it's possible to kill her in one cycle. You just have to do... You have to... The thing is, is that the attack that does the most is Lynx's spin attack. Lynx's spin attack, if you combine thrusts, slashes, horizontal slashes, and spin attacks all at once in quick succession, you could potentially end up killing Kale Domos in one, in one cycle and not have nothing else to worry about. But anyways, yeah.
Look guys, it's the Deku Seeds! And now it's time to create the side quest! Because that's exactly what we just utilized right now. These are the real Deku Seeds. The Deku Seeds that grow from the harmonies of ceremonies of the... Thanks. Great Deku Tree this year have once... Again, produce splendid seeds. With these seeds, we will continue new forests across the Great Sea. Let us go, Crocs, to the sea! See you all next year. And they are all gone. We will be seeing these Koroks again during a side quest where they will be planting these seeds. Except, you know, this side quest won't be being won't be done no time soon. But anyways, that is the end of Forest Haven, because there's nothing else for us to really do. Huh, that's how you speak to him. What's up, dude? Every year after the Koroks perform the ceremony, they fly out in the distance, and new forests will grow. Forests hold great power. They can change one tiny island to a much larger land. You know what? That probably explains why in the later um, stuff that happens is that that side quest does get complete canonically, and the land does get created. So it kind of ends up making the entire Great Sea into a great forest at that point. And Makar is here going to be staying for a while. How was my performance? Did it suit your taste? It did. You were pretty good. Keep it up, dude. He said that it's an instrument that people played long, long ago. It's taken many long hours of practice for me to be able to perform. You know what? It's true because it kind of doesn't make you wonder. Both Hollow, who studies the making of potions, and I are always on the side. Please come see us here again. We'll be waiting for you. Ah, don't worry, Makar. Something tells me you're going to be having a much greater role than you think. But anyways, yeah, that's basically it. But since I kind of like... Eh, you know what? I'll do that next time. There's no point in me doing that now. Let's just head back to the um the wonderful... What's-his-face? The King of Red Lions. Because I'm pretty sure he's just bored just doing nothing. I mean, hell, I'd be bored just doing absolutely nothing, just standing there doing crap all. <gasps> it's mail time! Mail time, mail time, mail time! I don't know the song, I haven't watched Blue Clues in a while. Dear Link, if you are reading this letter, it can only mean that you have peeked into one of our post boxes. Yes, I did. Please accept this and deliver post box. If you see Wiggly post box, that means there is something inside. Perilous adventure. Long story short, they're saying that there's stuff in it, and this guy just gave us a friggin' heart piece. I love it. Anyways, guys, that is the end of this episode of The Legend of Zelda, and uh, the King of Red Lion saying again it has attacked this area too. You must get the remaining pearl. It lies in a place northwest. We must sail immediately. But we're going to be doing that later because King of Red Lion needs to go ahead and get his King of Red Ass um, out of his um, boat. Anyways, guys, in the next episode, we're going to be heading northwest and seeing what's up to go ahead and look for the final pearl. I've been CCX. You guys have been a great audience. I hope you guys are enjoying your ride of the Great Sea. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next episode. Catch you all next time. See us.